Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Jason, certified financial planner and host of Fighting Words Financial. And today I'm going to mix it up a little bit and I'm going to be discussing a company that has not gone public. Now, most of the time I cover companies that are already public, but I've actually gotten a few requests in the past. And sometimes they request or phrase something like this. Hey, man, can you talk about some potential 10x stocks or 20x stocks? Man, if, if I knew or, you know, they're, they're asking me to sort of like say this is going to be a 10x stock or this is going to be a 20x stock. If I knew or if anyone knew uh, in advance which stocks were really going to 10x or 20x, then I think YouTube would be a lot different than it is today. And I think investing would be a lot different than it is today. So the reality is we don't really know how a stock is going to perform once it goes public. And the bare reality is this, guys. Most of your stocks that go public are going to end up failing as, as companies or at least failing as stocks as, as investments. The most common return for all public stocks since like 1926, the most common return is actually a 100% loss over time. And generally, those stocks fall off the market on average in about seven years. Now, this is, I'm not simply talking, I'm talking about some research that uh, was put out a couple of years ago by a guy named Henrik Bessenbinder or Henrik Bessenbinder, where he researched every stock on uh, U.S. markets going all the way back to, I think, 1926. Now, this is every single stock. I think it was like 26,000 stocks. The majority of them you're never going to hear about. Uh, but he did a ton of research on this. So what I'm saying is there's no way really to predict in advance when you're going to have these giant runs in stocks. But the stock I'm going to talk about today, I think, pretty much has a really good chance of being one of those, one of those great companies uh, over time. And it hasn't gone public yet. And going public this year, it may actually be one. It's no longer a rumor. This was rumored as late as June, but in July they filed their confidential paperwork, uh, you know, exp expressing their intention to go public. So we're probably looking at end of this year. This company Stripe is going to go public. Now this is a boring subject for some people because it's payment processing, but it's actually one of the most valuable subjects to talk about right now uh, in terms of where you can invest your money. Because it's not just that all transactions will move online, all transactions will involve some sort of third party uh, credit card processing over time. It really is already that way. Uh, are the way we, we interact with each other, the way we shop, the way we exchange uh, information and money online has changed so much. And we're all doing this at this point. It's no longer fantasy, it's just a part of our reality. So, the company I want to talk about today is the Irish American company Stripe that offers payment processing software to many companies around the world. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look at their background, you know, who their founders are uh, and what they're up to right now. And then we're gonna discuss some of that potentially record-breaking IPO. So without further ado, I'm gonna dive right into the history of this company. First, let's look at Stripe's history and figure out how they got to this point right now where you know their expected IPO might be one of the biggest ones in history. Stripe's founders, are two Irish brothers named John and Patrick Collinson. They wanted to revolutionize how digital payments were conducted. John and Patrick were interested in coding from a very young age, and they developed a popular inventory tracking app for eBay sellers when they were just teenagers. So they've been at this for a long time, folks. In addition, they also developed an iPhone app that works sort of like an offline Wikipedia which I'm sure was a pretty neat idea way back in the early 2000s, but hey, we've advanced beyond that. So uh, the development and launch of these apps, though, um, gave the brothers the opportunity to keep bumping into some of the same problems over and over and over. And a lot of that was that receiving payments from customers was kind of awkward and convoluted. Now, you're probably thinking, even though this was the year 2000 or so, why didn't they just turn to PayPal? Well, according to John and Patrick, PayPal is part of that broader problem. As you're probably aware, PayPal acts as an intermediary between a person making a payment and the company, and they receive a tidy sum for the service. And that sum can be pretty expensive. And But although PayPal is pretty expensive, they're also extremely popular because of how easy the platform makes digital payments, so people are just used to putting up with these hefty fees. The alternative to making payments uh, that way was to do it through banks, and you can imagine how clunky and inconvenient it is for these young internet companies to have to engage with actual physical banks, right? So in 2010, John and Patrick dropped out of college and they used their coding know-how, their coding skills to formally launch Stripe with the help uh, from Y Combinator. 
So one of the coolest things about Stripe that was noticed right away when it's launched is that the payment solution is literally only made up of seven lines of code for the person that wants to include it in their software package or website or whatever. That's right, just seven lines of code. Stripe's e-commerce solution is famous for its mere seven lines of code, which enable businesses to use its system to process payments from anyone by adding just seven lines of code to a website. This was kind of revolutionary for the time period. John and Patrick initially marketed Stripe software to young and growing companies who needed a quick and easy way to receive payments online. After a year or so of tweaking the, you know, the product and raising awareness of the company, the brothers decided to take a bold step and approach Peter Thiel and Elon Musk directly, you know, two of the founders of PayPal, which they were going to be in direct competition with, so I, I think that's a really bold move. They pitched the idea of transforming the way that digital payments were made, making it easier to connect customers and businesses and ensuring companies can integrate software quickly and without you know, advanced coding know-how. This at the time, like I said before, was pretty revolutionary and Musk and Teal were really impressed. And in turn, they put together a $2 million Series A round of funding along with some other investors. This funding really kickstarted Stripe's meteoric rise. And over the next decade, this company has grown immensely. These days, the company processes billions of dollars of payments per year for companies worldwide and has even signed deals with huge businesses such as Lyft, Facebook, DoorDash, Shopify, and more. One of the main reasons that Stripe is super popular is because of how easy it is to use for both customers and businesses. Say that you have your billion dollar idea and you decide to launch an online store. Many of us, including me, don't have the advanced coding knowledge necessary to hook up our website to the world's financial systems. We wouldn't have the faintest idea of how to construct and apply a payment processing system. That's where Stripe comes in. With the click of a button, you can, in a sense, install Stripe onto your website and let the software do all of the work for you. So when a customer purchases from your site, Stripe handles all of the complicated stuff in the background and essentially just hands over the money generated from the purchase, minus a small fee, of course. Now, I can hear you guys saying, Jason, but you said earlier that PayPal is taking fees and now Stripe takes fees, so wasn't that part of the problem? Well, I admit I, I did say that, but the difference here is twofold. Number one, Stripe's fees are way cheaper. The company's product is free to use and the transaction fees are 23% cheaper than PayPal. Stripe system is also built to be highly adaptable. Unlike PayPal's, it can work from the smallest firms up to the largest companies and in volume. So why am I bringing up this company now here in August of 2021? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this company is still private, but it won't be private for very long. Stripe filed its intention to IPO with the SEC in July of this year, 2021. Stripe is currently valued at over $95 billion, making it one of the highest value startups in the United States, even ahead of Elon Musk's firm SpaceX. At least that was true a few weeks ago when I did this research. Due to Stripe's insane valuation, many analysts and political commentators speculate that Stripe's rumored IPO could be the biggest one in history. Now that title is currently held by Saudi Aramco, which raised over $29 billion through its IPO in 2019. Can Stripe beat that figure? Who really knows at this point? The IPO market is certainly quite a bit different than it was in 2019. And it's also worth noting that most of the shares purchased during a popular IPO are by institutional investors, making it very difficult for investors like you or me to get involved in IPO like this. But Times have also changed since the IPO for Saudi Aramco. A lot of companies like SoFi and some other companies uh, allow you to get into pre-IPO types of investing. And I don't know what's gonna be going on with them regarding this IPO, but we'll find out how that looks here in the future. So I'll be honest guys, uh, Stripe kind of excites me here. Um, and it excites me in a way that's really not gonna come across to the general public. Let's be honest, payment processing is not the most exciting thing in the world. But I do own a couple of businesses and I do payment processing through a couple of different systems. And all of them are relatively clunky. And I'm always looking for a new solution that is uh, more transparent, that is more easily uh, you know, put onto the technology that I'm using, and of course has lower fees. So I'm very excited about any of these changes uh, to payment processing because it definitely makes an impact onto my bottom line for the different companies that, that I'm a part of. So 
There's just something fresh and innovative about this company too, and this is why it excites me. And I feel that's precisely what the payment processing uh, business needs in the future. In my opinion, they need, you know, the payment processing industry needs a significant overhaul with the tech that's available today. It should be much cheaper and it should be much easier to send and receive payments. And I also feel that Stripe is going to continue to make headway in this area. I'd urge everyone to keep an eye out for that Stripe IPO and any other news that's coming in the next few months. I'm going to be continually covering this uh, company up until the up until its IPO and probably after its IPO, but this is just sort of a first video on this, guys. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I've certainly enjoyed researching and talking about this. This was sort of a shallow analysis. I, I realize that. That analysis is going, to, is going to get deeper and deeper and more complex as I read more into their investor deck and things like that. And I'll pass that knowledge back on to you. So let me know down in the comments what you think about Stripe as a business. Are they going to break that record for the largest IPO? And also, if you could take two seconds to like this video and subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon. It's only $5 a month, and you'll have access to a community of really intelligent uh, investors who can help you get your investment knowledge up to that next level. I think you'd really enjoy that. And with that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day, and I'll see you next time.